Welcome back to Just Talking. We have a great show for you today. Why? Because we have the Executive Director of Wisconsin Community Media, Mary Cardona. Mary, nice to see you today. Nice to see you, Jason. How did you get involved in uh, public access? Well, I like to say I fell in love with Peg. Um, so what happened was uh, years and years ago, I was a political science major at the UW in Madison. And I was particularly interested in how people influence the political process and about how media played a role as sort of a gatekeeper, gatekeeper uh, with everything that goes on. And when I was in college, it was the 1970s, and we were still dealing with the three broadcast networks, PBS. Um, there wasn't much else. But when I was working a clerical job at Madison Area Technical College, I heard about uh, public access television, that there was a place called Madison Community Access Center where people could learn how to do video production and produce their own shows. And it was on TV. And I was like, I, I that was it. <laughs> I, I had found my place in life, so to speak. And I um, started going over there. We, I, I got involved with a group called Women Now. And it was a committee of the National Organization for Women. And we did uh, variously either a weekly or a monthly show over there in the studio. And one of my fondest memories is, you know, we used to do everything on three quarter inch tape. And we would go in there, you know, shoot something or shoot some footage somewhere. And then we would go in at around eight o'clock at night. And Carl Kucharski, who was the manager of the place, would give us the keys and say, lock up when you leave. <laughs> and we would go in there and we would literally edit all night. The sun would be coming up and we go, oh, I guess we should leave. And that's how I learned to edit. And that's how I got into it. Um, it was just wonderful. And once I got into that, I decided I really wanted to do this more. So I went back to graduate school and got a master's in telecommunications policy. Um, while I was doing that, I worked at City Cable, or which is now City Channel for the city of Madison. And I was a producer director there for several years. And then I started working for the village of Glenview in Illinois. And I was their um, cable services director for seven years where we had an all volunteer government access uh, station. So that meant that uh, the village had certain um, programmatic controls over what went on on the station, but basically all of the production work was done with volunteers I trained. And uh, we had producers, we had directors, we had camera operators, we had editors, everybody was sort of trained for certain jobs. Um, and it was a great group of people. I did that uh, for, for about seven years. Uh, we had like 50 volunteers on staff. It, it was just a lot of fun. And then after that, um, I came back to Madison and I did needs assessments for a while. So I don't know if your audience knows, but um, most places have local cable franchise agreements that govern the, the relationship between a municipality and their cable provider. And every 10 or 15 years, a city could enter into a negotiation with the cable provider and say, this is what our cable related needs are. We want to negotiate these terms and then we'll renew your, your agreement. Well, that was the case in Wisconsin until 2007 when state franchise legislation was passed here and it abrogated all of the local agreements, made them all null and void. And now all we have in Wisconsin is a statute. But for about 10 years, my job was to talk to community members and find out what their needs were in the area of media and how could this agreement help their needs. It could be broadband, it could be uh, programs on television, it could be um, an origination point for uh, doing uh, uh, you know, uh, programming live, all different things. Um, so I did that. And then I found out about Wisconsin Community Media. And I was looking for something different because the needs assessment job involved a lot of report writing. And after 10 years, I was done with that. And I wanted to be more interactive. 
And so I began working for Wisconsin Community Media, and that's an organization of 52 member media centers across the state, um, all doing some kind of access, government, public, and education. What area did you like the most? Well, that's a good question. You know, now that I'm retiring, um, I'm not even sure what that's going to look like. But one of the things I did a couple of years ago is, uh, and me and a number of other people, we founded a nonprofit called Wisconsin Community Media Program Fund. And I'm actually interested in maybe doing some work with that organization. We haven't done a lot with it yet. But the whole idea is to do more outreach to nonprofit organizations and basically people who want to reach an audience and say to them, look, we can help you with that. You know, we have these 52 member media centers. We have um, community producers. We have videographers. Um, how can we help you get your message across? And to do it more on a regional or statewide basis. So maybe it's an organization that's interested in an environmental issue. You know, how can we bring all of these people together, the people who have a story to tell with all of the assets we have within Wisconsin community media and get that story told and get it distributed out. So I guess I would have to say the thing that I enjoyed the most was actually, I gotta say production. And I haven't done it for a long time, but I like the idea of pulling together a program, um, you know, telling a story, um, you know, telling it well. Um, and I, I just haven't done it for a long time and I think it'd be fun to do. There's a lot of great things to get involved in Wisconsin community media. I think you know, there's workshops and uh, video festivals. Let's hear all about what, why should someone uh, be a part of Wisconsin yeah. community media? Well, so first of all, um, we have these organizational members that are media centers that operate cable access channels. That's one kind of member, but we're also really reaching out to anyone who does video who wants to reach local audiences. Uh, we have an independent producer membership. Uh, it's only $45 a year. And uh, what it enables you to do is use our new um, program sharing platform that we're really excited about. Um, so it's used to share programming statewide. So you can upload your show, write a little notice about your show, and it, it's accessible to all 52 members across the state, all of our media centers. And they can download that show really easily and play it on their, their, their uh, channel. Um, also, independent producers will get some room on our server. So if they're working on a show or they're collaborating with somebody else, they can upload raw footage and share it with other people and download it. So there's server space available for people who, who need it, who need to, to use something like that. Um, so, so the other thing is we have these conferences that really focus a lot more on production, uh, video production, uh, best lighting practices, um, how to edit, uh, using different applications in the process. Um, so there's a lot to be learned, like, or interviewing practices. There's a lot to be learned for somebody who's interested in doing video production, you know, on a regular basis. And um, you get to meet other producers. We also have a fest. Um, you can enter a program you produced as long as it appeared on a local peg access channel sometime during the year. And uh, we have awards. We have um, you can win either an excellence award, which is our top award, an achievement award, or a merit. And uh, and and then there's I mean you can not win an award too. <laughs> that's that's a possibility. Um, but you know so when we have our conference in May, uh, it's on this this next year. It's in Eau Claire on May 16th and 17th. We're at the Lismore Hotel. And, uh, you know, there will be the fest on Thursday night where you get to see clips of the winning entries. Um, there's a really great reception before the banquet. Uh, we have exhibitors, we have equipment vendors, you know, Sony might be there um, with cameras. I mean, there's all different vendors that come. Uh, we get more some years and less others. Uh, but it's just a really great experience to get together with other people doing community media.
Yeah, I agree. And like you said, the networking and to improving programs or just getting feedback and it's right. just a win-win all the way uh, as well. Yeah, um, exactly. So since uh, you've been in community media uh, with many different areas, um, why have you stayed in, in the game? Because that when you were talking about the challenges that you could have easily said, you know what, enough of this, I'm out of here. Why are you staying as and and, and still uh, going going as strong as you are? Yeah, I, I guess people are motivated by different things. Um, I always needed to be motivated by an idea, and uh, I think for me, the idea that regular people can talk to other regular people through media has always just really inspired me to do work, even work that I maybe didn't really like doing, you know, like database management, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the idea that, you know, the cause I was working for, the idea that, um, you know, we're enhancing um, the commun a community's identity, for example, by sharing stories from a lot of different people and um, getting nonprofits on the air to share what they're doing. Um, the idea that we're uh, promoting government transparency so that people know what their government is doing because they can see it on television. They can watch the entire meeting and know exactly what went on. Um, that that we're you, improving people's access to candidates for office and letting them talk for more than you know a sound bite, but they can listen to them through an entire debate. Um, I just think it's really important for democracy that um, that we have this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's the Video Fest is the best of the Midwest. Now, other states that can get involved too, correct? Correct. So um, it's a nine-state area. It's based on the Alliance for Community Media's Midwest region. Right. So if you want, I can try to name the nine states. Uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Kansas. Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, Missouri, Minnesota, Wisconsin. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe for those don't, I know you don't represent the Alliance for Community Media, but what is the Alliance for Community Media? Uh, it was founded in 1976, I believe, by people doing public access television. And they, uh, it's a national organization their, their main office is in Minneapolis, and uh, they have an executive director and president uh, and a national board and a foundation, but all of their work is centered around uh, uh, promoting PEG, serving PEG needs. Um, they have a national conference. They also have a video fest. In a way, Wisconsin Community Media is sort of like a mini ACM for Wisconsin. We they, we do a lot of the same thing. They also lobby, um, you know. So we're similar similar missions. But uh, what's nice about Wisconsin is that you don't have to drive very far to go to a conference. Um, you don't have to go very far to go to one of our workshops. So it it it's a nice little. Um, it's a smaller group. Yeah, that was a success when they formed that because it, it was called something else prior to Wisconsin Community Media, wasn't it? Right. It's called it was called Wisconsin Association of Peg Channels. Got it. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. WAPC, so, and that was founded in nineteen ninety seven. Right. Uh, right. By about maybe eight or nine access centers like Stevens Point, Eau Claire, Oshkosh, Milwaukee. You know, a bunch of them. Uh, yeah. Well, my switchboard has been going off the like crazy because there's some rumor going down that you may be stepping down or retiring <laughs> from Wisconsin community. Maybe you can set the record straight. What is going on? Oh, well, yes, I am stepping down as executive director. Um, I guess since I'm retirement age, there, it's a possibility that I'm retiring, but I'm having a hard time imagining what that is really exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if other people have this problem, but. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if I'm retiring or just stepping down, um, but uh, Candace Diaz is going to be the new executive director. She is taking over at the end of the year. And yeah, then I guess I'll just be answering the phone every now and again when she has questions. But uh, I'm really excited about Candace. She has um, 
a lot of experience in running a business, administration, program development. Um, she's worked in the public sector um, and, and the private sector. And I think she's got a lot of enthusiasm. She doesn't have direct um, uh, experience with cable television or media, but you know, there's all of us do. And you know, her role really is to make sure that you know the organization is running well. Um, and so, you know, if uh, and she'll learn, she'll learn about our issues. I mean, we do have some concerns about a bill that's right right now is in uh, Congress, HR 3557, that really is designed to eliminate local control or, or really erode local control over the rights of way and get rid of cable franchising in the states that have it. Uh, it's a really terrible bill. And so we're concerned that it might get wrapped up into an appropriations bill and that people may not realize it's in there and it might get passed. We've been having pretty good luck uh, with getting um, uh, members in Congress to, be, to oppose it, but that would be very bad for local television, franchising, local control, um, all those good things. Um, and then there's also a bill in, in on the federal level that um, I won't get into it here, but it, it's something good for PEG and it would help with funding PEG. Um, and uh, so we're promoting that as well. Uh, what can we do as a community to help keep public access going? Well, I think that if you like what you see on your local access station, you should let them know. You should email them or call them and say, hey, I really like this show. Uh, we don't hear enough from our viewers. Uh, I think you should think about using your local access channel. Um, is there, are you involved in a nonprofit? Um, is there some concern you have as a resident? Uh, think about contacting your station and saying, hey, I'd like to do something uh, with you. You know, I'd like to collaborate. Um, you, you know, these stations are, you know, belong to the residents. And uh, if, if you don't use them, you know, then they're less meaningful. The other thing is if you just want to do video production, I mean, a lot of our media centers are happy to have community volunteers helping them produce programs. And if you really just want to learn, if you're a younger person, if you're a high schooler or even a middle schooler um, or a college student, boy, we would love to have you um, because most of us actually got the bug in high school or college for this and then got into it more and more. So we're really, really interested in passing on the bug, you might say, for, for local access uh, to a new generation. And there's so much we can offer because we do real production. You know, we don't, you know, we really, we go out with the cameras and the lighting and the, we've got the switchers, we've got the equipment. I mean, that um, if you want to get your hands on some really interesting equipment, you know, we've got it. So, um, and we desperately need help. And especially in a lot of the smaller communities that have centers. So what you could do is if you're interested, you could go to our website, um, Wisconsin Community Media, and there is a, a spot there where it says uh, who we are or members or something like that. And if you see that there's a station in your community or nearby you, uh, and especially if it's a small town, I can guarantee you they need you. So then the my question to you is then, uh, in the future, are you going to bring back that women's show that you did back in the 70s and say, <laughs> we're back? I would love to see that. I'll tell you that much right now. You know, I am in touch uh, a little bit with one of the women I did that show with. Uh, she lives up in the Minneapolis area now. So, you know, you just never know. You never know. It could happen. And that's the nice thing we were talking about, you know, the future of community media or how it is today is that people may have their own equipment, but they can still submit programming, which yeah. makes the, the channel even stronger too. Right. So. And and yeah, and I didn't really say this, but beyond the, the cable channels we have, I mean, our stations are streaming, they're on Roku, Apple TV. Um, I don't know. There's so many different platforms now. They have 
their own web pages where they they show video on demand. They have their own streaming sites. So people can see us in a lot of different ways. But you have to remember that nearly half of uh, households are still subscribing to cable television. So we see that as a huge audience that is important. And uh, we don't, you know, if you look at Facebook or any of those other places that people show video, you know, there's this amount of audience and that amount of audience are all kind of spread apart. Um, so we, we just want to be as, as, in as many places as we can. And last question, why should someone get involved in community media? It's a great creative endeavor. It's a great way to collaborate with others. You meet fabulous people uh, and, and you're doing a great service to your community. Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. that and democracy. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if anybody want more information about Wisconsin Community Media, uh, where should they uh, where should they go or any contact? Yeah, you, if you just Google Wisconsin Community Media, you'll come up with our website and uh, we have all kinds of information on there about um, our members and what we believe in and all of that, so. Well, Mary Cardona, Executive Director of Wisconsin Community Media, I can't thank you enough for all the, uh, uh, everything that you've done for Community Media. It's just absolutely astounding and we thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done. Well, thank you. I think you're like one of the only original people who was here when I started. And uh, I was actually at that meeting in Milwaukee when they formed, or they, they taught John Urban, I think was that the oh, thing yeah. they, they talked about it. So yeah, but so I've kind of seen it over the years. And like I said, thank God they brought you in because everybody was just so glad that, that you came in and, and, well, I've and stuck with it. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it a lot. Great right. people here in Wisconsin. <laughs> Great. Well, Mary, thank you so much. And uh, we hope to see you again. Thanks. Thanks, Jason.